Yes, folks, it is more action figure unboxing and review action here on Mod Extra Games and Collectibles channel because the pre-Christmas Hasbro pre-order onslaught continues relentlessly to drop figures on my doorstep. And as you can see, the latest arrival here is the G.I. Joe Classified Retro Cardback Crimson Guard. This is the version of the figure with the silver faceplate and I think the lighter red uniform and a different color backpack. I think that's about it in terms of distinction between the mainline one. And in fact, this has arrived. I've got a pre-order of the mainline one as well with the black faceplate. And this one's come before the mainline one, even though I'm pretty confident I pre-ordered the black faceplate one before this one. But anyway, it arrived. It came. Uh, this is from Hasbro Pulse this time. I know naughty. Um... I do try and support the independent UK retailers as often as I can, but uh, one slipped through the net. And this was a pre-order that was still... I got the email, I was like, oh, well, all right. That's the way that is. I forgot to cancel one. But never mind. I'm sure you'll excuse me for that. And so, yeah, here we go. We've got the uh, classic retro card back background on the packaging here. That's... Uh, is it the same image, or are they modernised and updated the image? It's certainly very similar to my nostalgic recollection of the Crimson Guard packaging from back in the day. Uh, in fact, I'm going to do a quick comparison. Where's my phone? Ooh, I'm just looking at this picture on Google Images here now. And... Yeah, it's 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 redone. It's it's new artwork. It is new artwork. It's a replication of the original, uh, but it's it's new artwork. So there we go. But anyway, yeah, it's retro card bat. So we've got this large piece of real estate here with the artwork on the left hand side of the packaging. You can see the figure in the blister pack here on the right hand side, uh, d displaying some of the goodies, although not all. Looks like it might be a two layered packaging in there. Cobra enemy, a little bit of flavour stuff going on there and then on the back we've got the crimson guards data card uh roll cobra elite trooper primary specialty undercover espionage secondary specialty demolition birthplace various countries the crimson guard are the elite shock troops of the cobra legions too precious to be wasted on the battlefield they are dispersed worldwide in deep cover assuming normal appearances and lifestyles if i remember right there was a storyline in the Action Force comic, where Dusty, who I've just recently had, I was thinking about this just the other day, fell in love with a, a, crimson, a female Crimson Guard in the end. It, well, she turned out to be. If, uh, spoiler alert. She turned out to be a female Crimson Guard. Uh, but in any case, yeah, uh, there's the flavor text, and it's all in the various different languages. Then we've got some advertising for the other figures in this retro-carded line, the Storm Shadow, the Zartan, and the Snake Eyes. I've only gone for the Crimson Guard. Uh, I haven't gone for any of the others because uh, I've already got a Storm Shadow. I've already got a Zartan. I don't feel the need for duplicates uh, for individual characters like that. And I've just recently got the Snake Eyes and Timber double pack. So uh, there's that. And then we've got all the legal malarkey and bollocks at the bottom. And then because it's Retro Carbat, that's basically it as far as the packaging goes. So let's get this bad boy open. I've already cut. There was a bit of tape across the bottom. I've already cut that, but I'm going to do the old finger in and peel. There we go. Oh, that was a good one. That was, that was a good retro card peel by me there. Oh, and of course, there's the paperwork. So let's slide this out here. Yeah, I was right. There's one layer of these bits and then the main layer with the figure. Uh, oh, there's the... Hang on. There's the uh, foot plate there, the base. And uh, it was on the side here. Then in the secondary layer, we've got the red backpack. Uh, and the uh, mainline version's got a black backpack on it uh, and then we've got the uh, what's this the uh, the sheath the scabbard for his uh, for his sword there and we've got his rifle uh, it's got a kind of uh, is that an m16 m16 kind of vibe about it with the bayonet on the front and then does the magazine come out Oh, yes, the magazine comes out. I love it when that happens. There we go. So that's nice, that. Do you know look good with that? Stalker. Uh, then here's handgun. Little pistol-y thing. Oh, that's tightly packed in there. There we go. Oh, God, I hate that noise. Yeah, there's his pistol. Got a bit of a kind of Walter PPK vibe about it. Uh, the dagger came out unintentionally while I was trying to take the pistol out. Uh, got his big dagger there. Then the sword... The ceremonial sword, and of course, 
There we are. The figure himself. So there we are. There's the Crimson Guard and all his added accessories there. Uh, already looking like a pretty decent package altogether, but... As always, folks, I'm going to go away and have myself a bit of man-child playtime with this figure, get some in-hand experience, get some displays done, get some photos done, uh, and, you know, maybe take him out in the garden and do a little battle with my Joes. Um, but, uh, and then, once I've got a bit of a, more of a measure of the figure, I'll be back to offer some review thoughts. So stick around. Uh, I'm going to be a couple of days now, but for you, I'll be coming back and reviewing in three, two. One. Here we go then, folks. Here is the G.I. Joe Classified Series Crimson Guard, the retro card back edition. This is the one that you've just watched me unbox in the previous section of this video. And as promised, I've been away. It's been a few days now. I've been playing around with him, posing him up, displaying him, taking photos, getting out in the garden, obviously, and playing with my Joes and generally having a good man-child time with my toys, and I'm ready now to come back and share my review thoughts. So, if you're new around these parts, if this is the first time you've happened across the Mod Extra Games and Collectibles channel, let me let you know what a Mod Extra Games and Collectibles re review looks like. And I use a simple structure I call the three A's. The first A is aesthetic, so we're going to talk in the first section about how does the Crimson Guard look? What's the visual experience of the figure? What's the detail like? What's the sculpt like? What's the paint application? like and all that good stuff then into the second a that is articulation how does he move how does he pose is he doing what we want him to do for all the various different types of action figure experiences we're looking for whether you're a photographer a display shelf owner whether you're like me and you just play with your toys all the time are we getting what we want from that experience in terms of the articulation and then finally the third a is accessories what are the added value goodies that come with the crimson guard that make it worth the money and help us tell our stories help us make our displays help us take interesting photos etc etc and with all those three a's covered i should have hopefully shared enough of my review thoughts with you that if you're considering picking up a retro card back crimson guard of your own then you'll be able to make your decision in an informed way so let's not dilly dally any further around let's get into it and let's talk about the crimson guards aesthetic okay then i brought the crimson guard a bit closer to the camera so that we can conduct a finer detail inspection of the visual elements of the figure and I've got to say, as always with G.I. Joe Classified, there's an awful lot to like with this guy. The visual experience I've had with him since he arrived last week has been a positive one. I'm very, very happy with the way the figure looks. There is just something about the G.I. Joe Classified series team and their attention to detail, and therefore those little finer details that they put into the figure that give it some shelf presence and some shelf lift and make it much more eye-catching, and I've been enjoying that a great deal with this guy. And I would probably say that there's two aspects of the visual identity that they've really leaned into and they've sold to us. It's military and it's more formal and ceremonial in nature, and they really pin that down. And then, of course, the colour scheme, the crimson elements of the Crimson Guard, which I think they've also pinned down really, really well. Let's talk about the formal kind of ceremonial elements then. They've really, really nailed that. We've got all this lovely silver trimming around the uniform. There's some here on the on the cuffs. Uh, there's, we've got this uh, front section here with the piping and then piping around the collar, the silver pins, uh, the, the little bits of detail like the rank insignia and the medal there, the cobra symbol printed in silver there across the chest, the lanyard cord, the uh, rank epaulets on his shoulder, the rank insignia on his helmet, all lovely details, well balanced, framing the figure up well, sort of breaking up that red uniform but also selling that story of a more formal more ceremonial kind of dress uniform garb thing going on which i'm really really pleased about although while i'm zoomed in i don't know if you've all noticed i've got a little bit of a paint application boo-boo there that's not something i see very often with my gi joe classified but the silver paint doesn't go all the way to the tip of the wings on the metal which makes me sad but there you go i would also possibly say that with the retro carded version, because the entire faceplate is silver, uh, the mainline one being black with a with the silver grill at the front and side, it just kind of draws attention to the silveriness and the more ceremonial, more regal nature 
of what's going on with this figure. And so, yeah, I just, I mean, I've got no... Uh, in fact, I've got to confess, I was very undecided as to which one I would go for, whether I would go for a retro Crimson Guard or whether a mainline Crimson Guard, because I think both looked awesome when I saw the, the promo photos with the silver faceplate or with the black faceplate. And for the first time ever, I don't often duplicate figures, but for the first time ever, I've got one of each. So watch this space on the channel for a comparison coming soon. Uh, however, I, what I do think, getting back to my point, I'm in the weeds, is that the silver faceplate then also just accentuates the silveriness of all the, the ceremonial aspects of the uniform even more. The red is a good, solid red, certainly in line with my mind's eye of what I recall Crimson Guards looking like in the old Action Force comic books and the old Crimson Guard figures. I believe that the red on this one is different to the red on the mainline figure. Although, don't quote me on that. I'm, I'm not 100%. But I think it, it's more brighter, lighter in tone. I don't know. We'll, we'll see when uh, the mainline one comes and I can do a side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, but what, one of the other things I wanted to point out in terms of the colour scheme, etc., is the black aspect. So the black gloves, the black boots. We've got the uh, black uh, neck covering. Um, going up into the helmet there, the black belt and holster straps and such like. Um, so we've got the red and the silver, but then these black elements are just then framing it even more. There's a lovely balance to the way the figure is put together and the black sections just really add something to, once again, that visual shelf presence that you're getting from your Crimson Guard. Textural elements are always very important to me. I mention them all the time on this channel and the Crimson Guard is bringing it in spades. You can maybe see, I'm not sure my lights are doing it justice, but on camera here, but you can see the fabric texture look and feel and you can feel it ever so slightly if you run your fingers over in the uniform. That continues down into the arms and then you've got the kind of more more kind of practical trousery effect going on down the legs but as you can see in the legs as well lots of creases folds we've got the design in the knee pads there uh, the belts and straps have all got studs and pockets and clasps and stuff on them all these extra little bits of finer detail and then the leathery look of the boots look at them nice leathery look to them and little paint applications on the buckles as well just giving it a little bit more reality a bit more flavor and a bit more attention to detail the holster too you can see it's got that kind of leathery effect in it uh, well i don't know if you can can you see that if i oh that's a good angle there you go can you see the leathery effect in the holster there again giving it more depth more texture and uh, oh well i've got him this way around i'll just you can see the silver piping continues down the leg there just a little touch at the top of the thigh and then we've got more uh, Cobra insignia logo stuff going on uh, on the arm and you can see more of that texture effect in here so yeah lots of lovely details there texture in the lanyard cord the grill on the helmet and then the, the kind of more metallic helmety look and feel of the helmet <laughs> is there too yeah all very top notch in that respect all very top notch yeah so visually big thumbs up definitely a big thumbs up i'm loving the color scheme i'm loving the shelf presence the visual experience is awesome but then when you're getting closer the finer detail lives up to what you're seeing from a distance as well so it's a good balanced figure you're getting great shelf presence but you're also getting a good time when he's up close as well uh, so there's the aesthetic element. Let's now move on to talk a little bit about the figure's articulation. Okay, then, starting with above the shoulders in the head, and I found the head, actually, articulation a little bit disappointing, if I'm being honest. I'm pretty sure it's the standard kind of ball at the bottom, ball at the top of the neck. There's no hinge in there, but you'll see here that the up is very, very restricted. Not a lot of options in terms of the up. I believe this is because of the way the helmet meets the collar at the back there. Uh, the down isn't much more impressive either, although there's a little bit, at least there is a little bit of down. We've got full 360 in the neck, although as you can see there, mine's a bit stiff and gummy. Uh, I'll have to get a bit of heat on that. Um, but that is what it is. And then a tiny bit of tilt too. Again, not a great deal, just what you can achieve with the ball at the bottom of the neck there. Butterfly joints in both of the shoulders, giving a little bit of shuffle forward and back, and then a hinge in the shoulder as well, giving you the standard T. Swivel at the top of the bicep and tricep. Nice pinless double elbow that will get you up to there. Then the standard pegged in hands with, you know, the 
range, range of motion like so. Uh, and then both hands, left and right, have got the hinge to move up and down. What I will say, though, is that your swivel and your hinge is a little bit obstructed on this guy. We've got this little uh, flourish on his uniform, this little triangular pattern going over the top of the back of the hand there, which means your swivel's sometimes a bit restricted. And for some reason... I can't explain why, but that sometimes is a little bit restricted by how high this uh, wrist cuff bit comes. Then in the torso, we've got the crunch forward and the crunch back. And then there is a waist cut obscured by this belt here, but that gives you some swivel to the left and right like so. Again, mine's a bit crunchy out the box, but it's there. Then into the legs, it's the standard G.I. Joe classified drop-down joint there. Uh, you've got some outward motion, but you can see that his uh, knife sheath here obscures the obstructs the right leg from getting all the way up. But it's there, the motion's there, decent forward, reasonably good back, it, but it exists. Uh, then the thigh cut at the top of the thigh, double knee taking you all the way up to there. Boot cut here at the top of the boot, nicely obscured, uh, with some decent swivel there, although a little bit blocked by this triangular pattern on the side of the boot there. Not that you'd want his leg all the way in like that, I don't think, but there you go. I suppose, unless you're doing a really elaborate kind of injury shot. <laughs> and then, and my tone and my voice might be giving a little bit of a clue as to where this could be going, we've got the hinge and the rocker on the bottom of the feet, but... I don't know if this is my figure, or broadly speaking, a design issue with the Crimson Guard, but my hinges are really problematic. They're very springy, um, very restricted. I don't know if it's something to do with the more kind of uh, ceremonial style boot, uh, but I can obviously, can you see it moving there? Very springy, very gummy. I've had some heat on it, but it's not helped. Uh, but what this has meant is that when trying to articulate him, in some of the poses that I've been trying to put him in, you know, like if I've been sort of spreading his legs a little bit and getting him into a sort of, I'm about to stab you with my sword pose or something, I can't get, see there? That hinge just will not stay forward to get him into a, into a step motion. So I've had to bring the leg out a bit more and kind of to get it flat like that. Um, and then the rocker is a bit tight because the rocker and the hinge aren't working so well on the front here. So some of the more ambitious kind of action style poses where I've tried to get him running or taking a more kind of steady, uh, you know, like sniper stance and stuff has been problematic. It's been really problematic trying to pose him up sometimes, um, mostly because these hinges just don't come forward enough. Look, you can see there, the heel's off the ground. That hinge has got few millimeters of motion on them that it's just not doing so yeah the um the ankles articulation even though they're engineered the same way as i've seen many times on gi joe classified just don't seem to be working uh let me know in the comments down below whether uh, it's uh maybe a fault with mine or is it just a design flaw because of the ceremonial boots i think I mean, we've had boots like this before on Major Blood, and I've not come across this, so... So, broadly speaking, in terms of articulation, it's a positive review. It should be a thumbs up, because it's the usual set of articulation points that you get with all your G.I. Joe Classified, and that's great. They're good, solid articulation points. I've just... I don't know if this is a QC issue or an engineering issue. Like I say, Major Blood's got boots similar to this, and I didn't have that problem with my Major Blood, so... That's just tarnished my articulation experience because I've not been able to get him into as wide an array of poses as I've wanted to. And it's been frustrating, uh, all because of some dodgy hinges in the ankles. And just that one point of articulation is affecting my whole overall experience because the uh, the ankles are just integral to some of the stuff that you, wanna, you might want to do with your figure. Um, yeah, so... Articulation, good, unless you get a dodgy one, like me, I suppose. So first things first, let's get started with his rifle. This is very real-world reminiscent. Is that an M... An AR-15 or an M-16, something like that? I'm not a gun guy, but 
uh, Cornelius, if you're about, if you want to set me right in the comments, I'd appreciate it, my man. Uh, but a single uh, piece of moulded plastic in the black, but obviously with the uh, metallic paint job on the bayonet blade there. Lots of nice detail there. You can see in the grip and uh, in the handle and in the uh, mechanism of the, of the rifle. Also removable magazine as well, like so. And just goes in his hand with the old standard, you know, poke and twist uh, to get the trigger through the trigger guard there that we've all come used to. Crimson Guard also comes with a selection of small arms. He's got a dagger and a pistol. The dagger's a lovely piece of work. So we've got the sculpted detail in the, uh, you know, the, the sorry bit and the blade and it's painted in the metallic cover. But look at the other side here. We've got this little uh, serpent motif with a little snake head and the, and the teeth there. Yeah, very nice little touch. Little fine detail touch there just to give it some real flavour. It also adds to the kind of ceremonial uh, dress uniformy feel of everything. And then the pistol here, single sculpted piece of plastic, but it's got some sculpted detail in there to bring it to life. Looks nice. Just looks like a little snub pistol type thing. Uh, both of those, the dagger and the pistol, have got storage on the figure's body itself. The pistol slots into this thigh holster here. And the dagger into this sheath just on the uh, right-hand side of his belt. Sticking with his weaponry, we've got the sword here. A nice long piece of stabby-stabby action. Is that a... Would that be described as a cutlass? A cutlass is curved? Again, any... Uh, Folks out there with weapons knowledge want to put me straight in the comments down below, then please do. But it's a lovely sculpted piece of work. Once again, we've got the metallic paint job on the blade itself and then this snake motif in the handle uh, with the snake head and the teeth and the uh, scaly pattern there. Really lovely. This then has a sheath or scabbard. Is that a scabbard? Um, and it slides in there. Nice tight grip once again. Not going to fall out. Some more nice sculpted details in there. Now this has a couple of options in terms of placing it on the figure's body. There's a little pop stud on the side of this belt here and a peg uh, so that you can put it about his person like so. Or you can store it on his backpack. Here it is. Here's his backpack. Uh, this is in the red colour scheme. So the mainline version's got a black uh, colour scheme. This one's got a red uh, within the retro card back one. Um, you know, I suppose whatever your preference around that. Uh, again, sculpted detail within the backpack, just bringing it to life. Got the little silver cobra symbol painted on in the middle of the... Uh, I don't know what that is there, but it's there, uh, which is nice. That's lovely. Uh, and then, as you can see, we've got a peg hole on the side of the rucksack here, which will allow you to mount the sword. There's also a sticky outy peg on this side, incidentally, which will allow you, using the trigger, to mount the rifle. And then with this peg here, he's got the hole in the back, so you can pop that in there. And all his gear is being stored about his person. The final accessory with the Crimson Guard is the foot stand. Let's bring that forward into the light a bit more there. Uh, so these come with the retro card back editions of the figure. This is obviously the Cobra version with the cutout Cobra pattern on the panel there. Two pegs for each of the feet. Decent design. It's a you know it's a foot stand. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Um, he's got peg holes at the bottom of his feet, and so yeah, it's basically a big old double thumbs up as far as the accessory selection with this guy goes. Lots of great accessories to add to the value, but further to that, the accessories are part of the narrative. They're part of the visual identity of the character, and they really help us tell our stories. Even down to those fine detail little touches, like the little snake motif on the handle of his knife and his sword and of course the sword adding to the ceremonial dress uniform feel of the figure and the bayonet i don't know just everything about it just adds to the story and the identity of a crimson guard so it's not just a great selection of accessories that add to the value but the accessories are super specific to the character and help us with our displays our photos and just the experience the action figure experience so yeah loving the accessories with this guy figure comparison time now folks and here's the crimson guard with the cobra commander obviously very similar kind of aesthetic feel around the more ceremonial military uniform that the two of them are wearing and seemed an obvious pairing to me to get together i like both of these actually i think they they tie together quite nicely 
Here's the Crimson Guard with a Joe. I just like to chuck my villains in with a good guy when I do the comparisons. I've gone with Outback because he's one of my faves and, you know, I love that Tiger t-shirt. I think it's awesome. And, of course, what would a Crimson Guard figure comparison be without the obligatory Crimson Twins? And, um, yeah, they... They make for an interesting sight. Although what I will say is the uh, their metallic aspects of their uniforms seem a lot more dull by comparison now that I've had the Cobra Commander and the Crimson Guard out. The Crimson Guard is looking proper shiny by comparison. But there we are. There's there. The, the, the illustrious leaders of the Crimson Guard. Okay then, folks. Here's the Crimson Guard going around on the turntable in the kind of pose that I settled on last night when I left him on the shelf ready to record with today. I really wanted the sword in the story. I wanted that as part of the pose, so uh, that's mostly informed the decision as to what I've had got going on here. Obviously, I'm relying very heavily on the foot stand to help me deal with the weird ankle hinge situation. You can definitely see that slight backward lean where I can't get this hinge on the other foot to stay forward. It just keeps springing back. And even if I really force it into place, I've had the hairdryer on it. He's been in a hot water bath as well, but can't seem to sort those ankles out. So I'm relying very heavily on the foot stand to get him where I want him to be. But aside from that issue, overall, I'm very, very happy with the Crimson Guard. He's got the look that I wanted, he's got the feel that I wanted, loads of lovely accessories just to really kind of add to the value that we're getting for our money with the figure, so there's not a lot to dislike really, and if yours hasn't got a bit of a weird QC thing going on, if that's a, an anomaly with my particular figure, then more power to the Crimson Guard, you know what I mean? It's a solid, solid piece of work, and I've been having loads of fun getting him posed up. I've been mixing them up with loads of different figures, and yeah, it's just, it's, I, I don't know, uh, are these G.I. Joe classified figure reviews starting to get a little repetitive and boring because I'm basically saying the same things every time? Looks great, feels great, loads of goodies with it, really happy. The end. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But if that's the case then that's what I've got to say. So there we go. So if you've been thinking about picking one up, I'd highly, highly recommend it. All right, boys and girls. Well, that will bring us to the end of this Mod Extra Games and Collectibles review. I hope you've enjoyed my thoughts and they've helped you make your mind up if you want to pick one up for yourselves. If you have, then please take a moment to give me a like. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, then give us a subscribe. Otherwise, I've been Chris. This is Mod Extra Games and Collectibles, and I hope you have a really awesome, tremendous day. I'll see you again sometime soon, folks. Ta-ra now.